PFSME um, and, uh, and changes in, in spec scans and, and PET scans in the brain. So these are, these are all things that one can easily explain as being a consequence of the model. Now let me just say, these explanations are based on, on well-established mechanisms that we don't have proof that those mechanisms apply in CFSME. And that's, you know, that's an area which obviously needs to be studied. In addition to the issue of, you know, these shared symptoms and signs, one has to deal with the issue of the specific symptoms and signs. And, uh, and I think that, and so, you know, in the case of fibromyalgia, one has this very widespread pain. What's that due to? I argue it's due to probable impact of the no cycle on the thalamus. That particular part of the brain has a key role in downregulating pain processing. Uh, and, and this is discussed in my book. And let me just say there have been some similar proposals that, that uh, some of the fibromyalgia researchers have made previously. Okay, so what about um, CFSME? The most characteristic symptom of CFSME is thought to be this post-exertional malaise, uh, where exercise leads to upregulation of the whole spectrum of symptoms. Um, I argue in my book that this may be due to a specific defect in the HPA axis control in response to exercise. And let me just say that the a HPA axis control is, has been shown to be deficient in this entire group of illnesses and, in fact, in, in many other chronic inflammatory diseases. Um, but it appears that in CFS and uh, that there is a, an HPA axis uh, defect which is specific for it. And I argue that the lowered ability to produce cortisol in, after exercise may, in fact, explain the specificity here. And that, in turn, uh, leads to some predictions about how one should be able to develop specific biomarker tests for CFS, that is, biomarker tests that will, um, that will distinguish it from other uh, diseases and illnesses that may involve the same sort of, um, uh, of uh, inflammatory biochemistry. So here we are back with the no ono cycle. And, you know, what I proposed, of course, is that this is, as I said before, the 10th paradigm of human disease. And let me just say, I think that there may be uh, quite a number of other diseases that may also fit the cycle. And I'm just going to give you a list of some that I discuss in the book briefly. And, uh, and, and basically what I've done in the book, and, and this is a rather brief consideration, is to ask how good is the fit of these various diseases and illnesses to the five principles that we talked about before. Because the five principles serve no, not only as an explanatory model, but they also serve as criteria for uh, deciding whether a particular disease or illness could be a good candidate. And so what you'll see here is that many of these are things where one has an impact on specific tissues, um, and, uh, and, and, and it may simply be, they may differ from each other primarily in the way in which the no no cycle plays out when it impacts particular tissues. And so uh, I, I think that that's, um, okay, so let's, let's go on. Um, and uh, what I want to go, what I want to finish with is the issue of therapy. Uh, in my book, I discuss 30 different agents or classes of agents that are available today <coughs> that are predicted to downregulate one or more aspects of the no no cycle. Um, of these agents, 14 have been reported, and let me just say, I, the number I have in the book is 12, and there are two others that, that have been reported subsequently. <laughs> Fourteen are reported to be helpful in clinical trials of either CFSME and or fibromyalgia. So, um, and, uh, so we have actually quite a bit of data that things that are predicted to downregulate the no-no cycle, in fact, are helpful in the treatment of this group of illnesses. And so I've got a list of these, and uh, I think... Uh, 
you know, obviously I don't have time to talk about all these. Uh, what I want to say is that is that these um, these are thought to work on different aspects of the cycle, and so they they don't you know they they do provide evidence for a number of the sort of sections of the cycle, if you will. And so, uh, um, you know, a number of these are antioxidants and thus lower oxidative stress. And in some cases, some of them work to lower nitric oxide. And, uh, and uh, but some of them act to improve the function of mitochondria. And, uh, in, in, and, uh, and so, uh, and hi, this form of vitamin B12 uh, lowers nitric oxide. Um, some of the things uh, act to lower the, uh, uh, the uncoupling of the nitric oxide synthesis, and so they suggest that that, that, that has a role. And, uh, and some of these act to uh, lower the excessive NMDA activity that, that I talked about very briefly, okay? Um, so, you know, so what we have here, and, and let me say, these have all been studied in clinical trials, and, and, and they've all been reported to be useful. Now, in general, what they do is they produce relatively modest individual effects, okay? That's not surprising given the complexity of the cycle, um, and also given the fact that the, the two most central parts of the cycle are things that are relatively difficult to effectively downregulate. Uh, I do think that and, and so what's happened is that a number of, of physicians have developed, uh, more or less independently, complex protocols involving multiple agents. Some of these 14, some of the other agents that are predicted to downregulate uh, aspects of the no-no cycle. And, uh, and, and I, I talk about these five in my book, um, and all of them, all of their protocols involve at least 14 to, uh, to as many as 18 different agents or classes of agents predicted to downregulate different aspects of the no no cycle. And I think what these studies are telling us is that complex combinations of these agents, and most of these agents are nutritional supplements, um, can be much more effective than individual agents and that collectively we can get a good clinical response. Two of these have been tested in clinical trials, Teitelbaum's and Nicholson's. Um, let me just say that Sarah Myhill has developed a very similar approach, and, I, and, and in fact, there are several other physicians who, who have also done that. I think there are many ways of treating these illnesses effectively, and I think the notion that there aren't any is simply wrong, okay? And I, and, and I want to say that, um, forthrightly. Having said that, I also think that we need vastly more in the way of clinical studies on these. Um, okay. Let me just say, I, I've recently designed uh, an over-the-counter protocol through the Allergy Research Group, and there were handouts out there today which described this in some detail. This is available today in the UK and elsewhere. Uh, it contains 12 of the 15, uh, sorry, that should have been 14 classes of agents where we have clinical trial data of effectiveness. And uh, although in some cases I've chosen a different member of a group than the one that was actually tested in the clinical trials, okay. Um, and uh, in general, I've been getting anecdotal reports, and anecdotal reports, of course, are, are always have to be questioned. Uh, uh, some, some of, uh, of, of efficacy of, these, of this protocol from people with CFS and also with people with MCS. Um, Dr. Levine, who's the head of Allergy Research Group, has been getting anecdotal reports on fibromyalgia as well from a number of physicians who've been using it in the U.S. So I think that this, I think that if we focus our therapy on down-regulating the no oh no cycle. It will work very broadly, okay? And, uh, and, uh, and that's, you know, that's basically 
um, you know, kind of the, uh, the prediction, and obviously we need a lot more data to test whether that prediction is right or not. Okay, so this is my last slide. Um, so, in conclusion, we now have, I think, substantial evidence supporting the no-no cycle etiology for these multi-system illnesses, uh, and one which has great power as an explanatory model of these illnesses. I believe that we have substantial evidence for the fifth principle of the no-no cycle in these multi-system illnesses, uh, including CFSME, that we should treat, treat the cause, not the symptoms. Uh, I think it's time, in my view, to start serving the victims of these illnesses effectively by doing so. Thank you.